Reading with your kids. Hola, ni hao, konnichiwa, assalamu alaikum, shalom, jumbo, bienvenidos. Hi, my name is Jedley and this is the Reading with Your Kids podcast. So happy that you're a part of our beautiful Reading with Your Kids family. We have a wonderful, wonderful interview today. Our guest is the author of Rock and Roll Woods. Her name is Sherry Howard, and in addition to talking about her book, we're going to be talking about sensory issues, about kids with sensory issues, and how we can help our kids understand that kids with sensory issues and non-neurotypical issues can be great friends and deserve our respect. Hey, for all the authors that are listening out there, I wanted to share with you this great email that, that we received here at the Reading With Your Kids podcast from Dr. Linda Mubarak. She is the, uh, a past guest and the author of Maxine's New Job. Here's the email. Dear Fatima and Jed, good news. Maxine's New Job has been nominated to receive the prestigious Henri Award at the 2018 Christian Literacy Awards for Outstanding Literacy Work in the Children's Book Division. I sincerely believe your certifying Maxine as a great read helped bring increased social media attention to the book. Thank you for the exposure and the great marketing. We are so happy for Dr. Linda Mubarak that her book, uh, Reading With Your Kids Certified Great Read, Maxine's New Job, received this prestigious recognition. We would love to help your book receive that same kind of recognition. If you are interested in having your book considered for our Reading With Your Kids Certified Great Read program, please visit our website, readingwithyourkids.com. You can click on the contact button, send us a, a note, and we'll send all the information back to you, or you can go right to our Certified Great Read page on our website. It's fun, it's easy, and it is really, really an effective way to let the world know that your book stands out above all the rest. The Reading with the Kids Certified Great Read Program. Joining us right now from right outside of Louisville in Kentucky, she is the author of a great new book called Rock and Roll Woods. Please welcome to the show, Sherry Howard. Sherry, how are you? I'm great today. How are you, Jed? I am wonderful. Sherry and I had a wonderful little conversation about Louisville and about the Derby and, 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 uh, how wonderful it is down in Louisville at that time. And, um, she told me I need to check it out. And, and, and I agreed, but I also said we need to check out Rock and Roll Wood. So I am anxious to find out what this book is all about. This book is about a grumpy bear who doesn't like new things. Mm -hmm. And surprisingly, he finds that he does like some new things after all during his journey in the book. Mm -hmm. Uh, The book has really two layers to it. One, just a really fun story about a bear named Kuda. And then that second layer about the whole issue of sensory issues. Ah, okay. So he... he I'm, I'm, I'm guessing from the title, he doesn't like loud music. Exactly. He doesn't like change at all. Okay. Uh, and he especially doesn't like it when loud music invades his quiet woods. That is fascinating. And, and talk about a coincidence. My wife is a special needs teacher in um, the Boston Public Schools, and she just welcomed a brand new student to her classroom today who has those sensory issues and uh you know my wife so my wife is on the phone talking to therapists getting him the the big headphones the ear protectors and um uh figuring out ways for him to uh be able to be comfortable in her classroom and it's really been amazing to me uh I also was a special ed teacher and administrator mm-hmm. so a lot of what I write is informed by those experiences mm-hmm. But as I've done school visits and ask these big groups of kindergarten and first graders, who doesn't like loud noises? An amazing number of children raise their hands. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So a lot of what we see in special needs kids is also there in a lesser proportion in all kids. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, I agree. And I think it's just a, a matter of degrees. And, you know, this is uncomfortable, but I can handle this to this point, whereas another person can only handle it to this point. 
Um, you know, as I get older, I'm, I'm, I used to be a huge fan of loud rock and roll music, but not so much anymore. <laughs> My husband had a band, so I was like immersed in uh-huh. it, uh, when I was younger, but it would not be my first choice to sit, uh, near the speaker now. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Y- you know, uh, you know, we we're talking, Sherry and I were talking about being in Louisville and, uh, one of the, the events that I've traveled to Louisville for is a, a big Christian music festival called, um, Winter Jam. And, uh, my, my daughter is in the music business, so we, she has a lot of friends and a lot of friends who work on that tour. And one year we're in Louisville and we had backstage passes, so we're going back and forth and there's this one band that's, um, really loud rock and roll and then they have this great big entrance with all, all sorts of pyro. And, uh, so I said, well, I want to go in in front of the stage and see what's, see that thing, you know, see their entrance. And I did, I went out there and it was really cool. The lights were great. And I went to, as I was walking back, uh, to be with my daughter backstage, uh, all of a sudden I noticed all of her friends were gesturing to her cause I couldn't hear them talking, gesturing to her <laughs> to put her fingers in her ears. And she did. And I was really, and instead of reacting, I was really kind of puzzled. And sure enough, two seconds later, this big explosion of pyro happened on stage and i couldn't hear for about 15 <laughs> minutes I, I was right like a there. gunshot yes it was right i was right there like boom and uh yeah that's so i now i know to put my thing or at least put those earplugs in so uh um, what was the motivation? Obviously, you have ex- have experience working with kids with with sens- sensory issues, and, and you're uh, sensitive to that, and you have empathy for that. What was the specific reason or motivation to write Rock and Roll Woods? Well, the book didn't start by me sitting down and saying, "I'm going to write a book about sensory integration issues." Mm-hmm. Um, my granddaughter, who at the time was eight always brainstormed book ideas with me. Mm -hmm. And I said, okay, what do you want to do next? And she said, I want to write a book about a bear. And I want the bear to be named Kuda, which is the name of her bearded dragon. So Mm -hmm. the book was really born just as a fun story about a bear. And then my family's really involved in my writing. So we, we, I decided that it would be about not liking loud noises in his quiet woods. So we brainstormed looking for a really unique noise mm-hmm. because, you know, we talked about lightning and all the things you might hear in a woods. But what would be something you wouldn't expect to hear in the woods? Something really unexpected. So the book really grew within our family. And I, even in the book, I give my granddaughter credit for the idea. It was her idea. That's wonderful. I, she must be thrilled that, that her idea is now in, on paper and published as a book. Yes, she's always proud to autograph the books herself. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. I love it. Now, is she, th- has she engaged an agent or a lawyer to get a percentage of? Uh, <laughs> no, but actually, okay. I often have to pay her $2 for a beta read. Uh, <laughs> now that she's famous. <laughs> I love it. I love it. I love it. Well, this is wonderful. Well, I guess the obvious question is, you know, how can, um, a, a, a teacher, we usually talk about how parents can um, use a book and what kind of conversations parents can have. But I'm just imagining my wife and, and she's in school and now she has to uh, help her other special needs students who aren't dealing with with these sensory kind of issues. And she has to help them be empathetic and uh to to this new student um is rock and roll woods would that be a way to for her to address that and 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 how could she do it with the book that's exactly what i hoped the book would do would Mm -hmm. be an entry point for teachers to talk about issues like this with their neurotypical if there is such a thing Mm -hmm. students uh and build some empathy because kuda survives all this through the help of his friends Mm -hmm who just embrace him anyway. The book has back matter uh, that can be used uh, to help guide parents or teachers. And I also have lesson plans available for teachers. 
I don't have them posted yet, but they are available and a few teachers have used them. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I like the idea that the book can be used in so many different ways that it can just be, I've been told it's a really fun bedtime story uh, by a lot of friends with really young kids, which surprised me Mm that like really, really super young kids, but it can also be a tool to help introduce this whole idea of children who struggle Mm -hmm. with sensory issues. Mm -hmm. And um, it is going to be a series. So the next book in the series will deal with a little bit different sensory issue. Mm. Can you, can you help us and especially me kind of understand a little bit more about um, this sensory issues and, and, and what might uh, cause them or, or what a student with them is kind of feeling so that we can have more empathy for those kids and then pass that empathy and that understanding and knowledge on to other kids? Well, we don't exactly know what causes sensory issues. Um, they're very typical with a lot of uh, neuro, atypical neuro mm-hmm disabilities. So a lot of people have equated this with autism Mm -hmm. and it's not strictly related to autism. Mm -hmm. There are just, just like autism has a spectrum where kids fall at one end or the other or somewhere in between. So do these types of disabilities. So to understand them, you just almost have to think in terms of what makes any child individual. Mm -hmm the way that child takes in touch and sounds and smells and all of those things uh, combine for their sensory development. Now, I think one of the best examples, and I think I use it in the uh, back matter in this book, you might have a shirt that has a tag on your neck Mm -hmm. and that tag might annoy you just a little bit, but to a kid who's, who processes senses of feeling a little bit differently, it might feel like a raccoon is gnawing on their neck Mm -hmm. just by having that tag touch their skin. Mm -hmm. So something in their wiring just compounds the way they process senses. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that can be with any sense. Yeah. You know, I I can, certainly relate to that not that i have sensory issues but i i did have shingles at um at at a time in my life and wow i mean you mm-hmm. know just the air blowing across my skin right. it was like ah and it just felt like it was burning and um it's it's uh, you know for me you know i knew it was temporary and you know i knew it was going to go away and there was some medicines that i could have taken if i wanted to but wow, what a, what a challenge it must be to, to live with this every day and to not have a, a sort of light at the end of the tunnel. You know, I knew that this would probably pass in a week or two. Uh, but to, you know, be a kid and not understand it and not have somebody be able to say, Oh, you know, you're going to get over this in a year or two. That, that, it- that's a perfect example, Jed, the the shingles, because mm-hmm. that is like your senses lit on file, mm-hmm. your nerves, your nerves are on overdrive. Mm-hmm. And that's what happens with kids who experience these issues. How can we better understand? Because it's obviously now my, you know, my wife it has to deal with this now because she's has this student in her classroom. But I'm wondering if there's a way that families can start talking uh, about these kind of issues beforehand be, so so that when a student comes into a classroom and they have sensory issues it doesn't take a a week or two weeks uh, learning process that they can sit back and they can say oh yeah i dig it he needs to put the the headphones on cuz he's he's sensitive to loud noises just like me i have hay fever and i sneeze in the springtime Sherry will be back to give us her insights into how we can help our kids understand that every kid 
deserves to be respected. Hey, another great way to help kids understand that everybody deserves to be respected is with my educational magic show, We Choose Respect. We Choose Respect inspires kids to be respectful, to be kind, and to stand up for anybody that's being left out or is being hurt. It really is a wonderful show. I present it to hundreds and hundreds of schools all throughout the United States. And I would love to bring it to your community. Now, I know that the chances are you're not the person who makes the decisions as to what kind of assembly programs come into your kid's school. But you know the people who are, the principal, the guidance counselor, the head of the PTA. You also know the librarian down at the public library or maybe the youth minister at your place of worship. All of these folks are looking for ways to inspire kids to be respectful, to work cooperatively, to build a a safe and caring learning environment. And it's been my great honor to have been able to do that at so many schools, and I'd be just as honored to come to your community. You can find out more about my show, We Choose Respect, by visiting my website, jedly.com, J-E-D-L-I-E, jedly.com. Oh, yeah. I dig it. He needs to put the, the headphones on because he, he's, he's sensitive to loud noises, just like me. I have hay fever, and I sneeze in the springtime. Well, I think the best thing to do is, you know, find books like this, mm-hmm. and I'm sure that there are others that are similar, and make make sure that kids develop empathy. And I think that if children develop empathy in general, that they will also have empathy for any kind of special needs. And I think our schools are doing a better job with that than they used to because, you know, back back in the day, and I'm old enough to remember the day when I first started, there was so much um, isolation of children with special needs that uh, children didn't see anybody much different than they were. You know, if they were super bright children, they tracked their whole life with super bright children Mm -hmm. and children, even with very mild or moderate special needs weren't integrated. Mm -hmm. So now with children, even with severe needs integrated in the classrooms, there is more of that. And parents as early as possible need to have their children around children with special needs and they need to teach them in so many ways that all kids are different. And that's a wonderful thing we need to embrace. You know, as, as we're speaking this, this, and this is what I love about the podcast, uh, because I learn so much from it and I have so many revelations as we're speaking. I'm thinking, yes, this is a great book. Rock and roll woods is a great book to help kids develop empathy for kids with sensory issues. And, and wouldn't it be great for us to help our kids develop empathy for, for kids who are different, but even more important, how wonderful would it be if we could, in the process of, of helping our kids develop that empathy for kids who are different, help our kids understand that it's okay for them to be different? Exactly. You know? Exactly. And that's the wonderful thing, I think, about school visits. Mm-hmm. Uh, and this is the, the part that shocked me was if you give children the opportunity to acknowledge their differences in a group setting, they're way more willing to do that Mm -hmm. than to come up to you as a teacher or an individual or a parent even and say, I'm experiencing this feeling. A lot of times they can't articulate that, especially the really young kids. Mm -hmm. They experience it, but they really don't understand what they're experiencing. Mm -hmm. So the more books that are out there, And I think animal books help because it gives them a character they can relate to without making it as much of a personal experience. You know, Kuda has trouble with sounds. Oh, maybe I might have trouble with sounds, too. Mm -hmm. Or maybe I might need to talk to somebody about this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've experienced it. I I know in my... um in my educational magic shows, I've made lots of adjustments in my show. I had this um, great little routine in my show. It was really funny where I'd come out and set up a chair and it would clash and break and fall apart. And it would finally, I'd, I'd get it set up and I was able to sit on it and, but then it would fall apart. And it was a lot of fun. 
but it was loud. It wasn't it wasn't crazy pyro and rock and roll concert loud, but it was the sound of metal banging together. And um, there were a lot of kids who were uncomfortable with it or who got scared. And at one point, I thought I was being very wise by starting my show going, hey, listen, some of the things – you might hear some sounds and they're loud. They're not scary. They're, they're just loud and you, you, it'll be over in a minute if you can put your hands in your ear. Um, but then at one point, I realized, you know, this is funny, but I don't need to have it in my show you know, yeah. because it's really making a lot of kids uh, – you know, and it might just be one or two kids per show. But it's like if I'm doing – 10 or 15 shows a week. Now we're talking about 30 or 40 kids and I'm making feel uncomfortable and I don't need to. And that's really sensitive of you because a lot of people might not have recognized that as what it is. Mm -hmm. And it, you know, it's hard. Like even this book, when I do a school visit, we make noise, Mm -hmm. you know, this, when you do a reading of this particular book, it's, it's noisy, but I try to manage that in a controlled way. And if, if I had a kid with really severe, uh, sensory integration with noises, they might not even be able to tolerate a reading of this book mm. or the little tiny, you know, I wanted a drum, but I bought a special drum that has a real soft mm-hmm. boom, 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 mm-hmm. so that it's not this huge explosive boom, boom, boom. Mm-hmm. So, it it is it's impossible and i can say this as a very wise and experienced educator it is absolutely impossible to meet all needs mm-hmm. you just simply can't mm-hmm. you can only do your very best to realize that they're there to acknowledge what you can to help children feel comfortable expressing them mm-hmm. and then go from there mm-hmm. yeah yeah and you know, it, it in in a perfect world, everybody would. Well, I, well, I was going to say, in a perfect world, everybody would be the same. We'd all be able to experience the same thing. <laughs> but that would be pretty boring when you come yeah, to think that about would be it. Boring. And yeah. you know, and 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 rock and roll woods is great, and I'm sure a live reading of it is really fun. But um, if a kid can't handle it, then that kid's going to survive. And yeah. and maybe the kid will enjoy a, a, a quiet reading with just him and his teacher, him and his and his family. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So or you, maybe his family would benefit from it if he didn't. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. So so this is the f- the first book in a series. It, do you have a working title for the second book? Uh, the working title is Kuda's Berries. Uh huh. And uh, Kuda is going to have to swim to reach his berries. And he does not like the feel of water. Ah. So it's just a different sense mm-hmm. that he's going to deal with. Mm-hmm. And um, that's probably a little way out yet. It might be released next year, but um, sure, it works. Now, just because you are uh, you have this expertise and we've brought up this issue of sensory um, sensitivities um, – if there's a family out there that suspects that their child or maybe someone in their extended family or somebody in the neighborhood may have some sensory issues, what's the best next step for them to to take, to get some help? I think probably um, you when you notice it with a preschooler, unless it's extreme, mm-hmm. if it's extreme, you would, of course, take it to your pediatrician. Mm-hmm. But once they start school, if you really start seeing it, talk to the teacher, the school counselor, and they'll make sure that you get hooked up with the right therapies if those are needed. Because very few children really have problems to the extreme Mm -hmm. that needs an intervention unless they're already identified as needing some therapies. Okay. So it, it would be really unusual to have a kid with just an isolated sensory integration problem without some sort of a diagnosis that went with it. Not, it, it's not impossible. Mm-hmm. Uh, and actually a lot of sensory integration issues are just normal. Mm-hmm. They're just part of childhood development mm-hmm. and it can be perfectly normal for a child to have some issues. And again, unless they're extreme, 
you just kind of watch them and wait and see what happens. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But otherwise, pediatrician, teacher, counselor. Yeah, great. Well, where can folks go to learn more about Rock and Roll Woods and to learn more about Sherry Howard? <laughs> well, I have I have a website, SherryHoward.org. Um, there are also, I think if you Google me, there are a lot of interviews right now up because of the book launch. And uh, I have bared my soul in many places. I know that uh, a lot of people really responded to a blog that Vivian Kirkfield did where she asked a lot of questions and, and I had a lot of conversation. I'm on Twitter. I'm active on Twitter at Cher L. Howard. Uh, I'm active on Facebook, Sherry Hyber Howard and Sherry Howard. So I'm pretty active and Instagram. I really enjoy social media. So I'm there. Excellent. Excellent. Well, the name of the book is Rock and Roll Woods. Uh, the author is Sherry Howard and, and her granddaughter. And, um, <laughs> so, and we've had such a blast. Check out the book. It'd be a great addition to your family library. Sherry, thanks so much for being with us today. Thank you, Jed. It was so fun. Please be sure to join us for the next edition of the Reading With Your Kids podcast. Our guest will be Libby Kisner. Libby Kisner, she's coming to us, uh, our very first guest from Jerusalem in Israel. So we're really excited about that. She is the author of a great column called Ask Dear Libby. Hey, if you are the author of a great book, we would love to have you on the show. Being a guest, it's fun. It's easy. It gives you an opportunity to tell thousands of people all around the world about your great book. And check it out. It's free. That's right. It's free. All you need to do is to go to our website, readingwithyourkids.com. Click on the contact button. Let us know about your great book. We'll let you know the next easy steps. Hey, I want to thank Sherry Howard for joining us today. Make sure you check out her book, Rock and Roll Woods. We'd also like to thank you. Thank you so much for taking the time to join us. And as always, thank you so much for taking the time to make the world a better place by teaching your kids to be respectful to everyone. And one great way to do that is by reading with your kids. I'll be looking for you in the next edition of the Reading with Your Kids podcast.